Wait, you've been watching LCDC TV with me, John Sitton. Bring your fucking dinner. Hello and welcome to LCDC TV. Today I'm really excited. We're going to be having the famous, or should I say infamous, John Sitton, ex football manager, football player. And if you've ever seen his videos on YouTube on his managerial half time talk at Leighton Orient, you know exactly what I mean. I think it's going to be a fascinating interview. And welcome to part one of two episodes with John Sitton. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to LCDC TV. Today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome to the studio the famous or infamous <laughs> Mr. John Sitton. John, yeah. welcome. Oh, cheers mate, thanks for that. Thanks for yeah. coming in. No, you're welcome. It's, um, I've really been, I've just said off camera, I've been really looking forward to interviewing you. You're one of the trade's real characters. I'll follow you on Twitter. What is your real, what's your Twitter name? At the real six. At real six. Yeah, so yeah, I'll tell you why, because when I after the documentary very briefly, like after the documentary, there was about five people on Twitter impersonating me. <laughs> so when they was using me name, they was using me name yeah. so that they could cut people off. <laughs> and I be on it. So they like so then my wife's my wife's friend, bless her Karen, she uh she can't and said, we'll have to sell it, but you'll have to call it the real shit. So it's not a vanity thing, no. it's not an ego thing. It's just to make it's sure, to make sure it's 100%, yeah. yeah. If I'm going to, if they're going to be off, it's by me. I mean, I know we're going to, we're going to meander down the road of football and taxi. I know that conversation's coming, but I just wanted to start you off, John. Um, you started at a youth level with Chelsea and Arsenal, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. And uh, yeah. you turned down Crystal Palace to join my club, Chelsea, in uh, 1977, was that right? Yeah, well... Uh, What's, what, what happened before that? Now, a, couple of, that years, a couple of years off, I had a, I had a choice. I forgot, I actually forgot one. There was, I said in my book, um, if you don't mind, a, a, like a little please, knowledge. Please, yeah, yeah. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. It's been out for a couple of years now. It's gone really well. Um, is there's a cab driver just, yeah, just yeah. to dock my cap to the trade. And a little sort of tongue-in-cheek Mickey take out of um, my brief tenure in in the game as a coach and a manager, but I uh, put in there that I had the choice of nine clubs, it was actually 10, because I forgot Maurice Newman at uh, Leighton Orient, offered me um, like a, a little wad of notes in a, in a brown envelope. Um, but yeah, I'd already had a little taste of it at uh, Arsenal. Um, my dad lied about my age, I got in there. I was in there for just under two years, I was there for a wow. year and a bit, I got that Osgood Schlatter. Uh, come away, rested, got better, which is basically, uh, Everyone gets it, some know about it, some don't. You know, when, you, when you're sort of involved in sport, it could probably, um, it's probably a little bit more painful because it's just manifested by growth spurts, that's all. Yeah. And then I got back in and, um, yeah, I had, I had like 10 clubs after me, but I went to Chelsea and fell in love with it. Yeah. Yeah, I did oh. 74 that was. Wow. Yeah, schoolboy, and I just went and bought like that straight away. Within, within two or three, um, I used to call them, Evening coaching sessions, so that would be the academy, the equivalent of the yeah. academy. It was like. Uh, Where were they, Ill, John? That was at Mitchum. At Mitchum, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'll never forget the journey. It was like, like near enough a four hour return journey to do an hour's training. Yeah, they're probably show for them there now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, what, and while you was there at that era, John, what players were you working with, the manager? What, what sort of was the same? Oh, Sexton was still there. Sexton? Yeah, I, me I remember um, getting, like, there was a break in the Easter, like the Easter break. And then what you used to do, once the first team had parted company, they used to stay behind and take the kids. We used to go for a week, um, what they call like, sort of coaching camp or training camp. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was late on the first day. Yeah, but that worked well, didn't it? That worked well, yeah, that worked. <laughs> and he just said, he said afterwards, like, he said, who, who was late like that? And I said, I said it was me. And I said, I'm sorry, I apologised when I ran up to him. Because obviously, like, I felt uncomfortable when they said you're in Dave's group. There was, uh, uh, Eddie Matt was doing a bit then. Um, Dave, Dave Sexton, Eddie Mack, Dario Grady, Ken Chaletto, and I think they had one one senior pro stay behind and help with the coaching. Yeah, team. yeah. So I, I run into the thing to uh, the scout, and I just said, I'm really sorry. I said the train was cancelled because it, it was a mission. I, I live, I live between two stations. Where was you, East London boy? I was, I, I was born east, but we live north. My granddad spread a bit of redis to get to get us back north. Oh. Um, 
I was between Everton and Green and Silver Street. And I used to jump on now, go through the Seven Sisters, down the, down the thing to the uh, tube, Victoria Line, through to, I wow. think it was Stockwell, change yeah. to Stockwell, get on the Northern Line and go right to the end of the Northern Line, which was Morden, oh, and then jump on the 118. The bus to Mitchum. That was my journey. Yeah, yeah, every Monday and Thursday. Yeah. Nowadays, the, the old man gets them in the Range Rover that the clubs pay for. Pay for, yeah. Runs them over. That's don't right, it? runs them over there, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, or we send you a car. And your memories of being at Chelsea them days? Good memories, John? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll mixed, yeah. I'll, I'll going to say it's probably the majority of my career, the way it's panned out, uh, this bit of sweet. Yeah. If that's the right expression. Yeah. Um, but more good than bad, you know what I mean? Some of it's been soured, which I'm addressing in my second book. Made me look a bit of a mug because um, I drew a line in the sand with regards to um, how I was approached, how I was dealt with, how I was spoken to all the way through my life. I expect to be treated how I start out trying to tr uh, treat people. But um, you had the uh, child sex abuse allegations uh, quite recently, a couple of years ago. And um, like I say, it, it transpires that the geezer involved. I named him in my first book as being a, a good friend and mentor. I mean, we knew, we all knew he was, he was overtly homosexual. Yeah. Right? But we never thought he'd get involved. No. With, with any, and it transpired that he did. So that, that, put, that takes the dairy off of, off of like the, my time now, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. And that, plus the ending. Yeah, which uh, came after six years. I mean, they put the things in front of me, the schoolboy form, so they, what, they've snared you then, right? So you, you can't. But can't I'll still, move anyway. You can't move, but I'll still be in monitoring because of all my representative honours. I mean, three out of the back four we had all had good pro careers. It was me, Paul Miller, centre backs, and Tony Gow, who started at Chelsea. He was right back in, in our representative Middlesex in the London side, yeah. So three out of the back four had good Literally careers. Like we had a good spine, actually, because yeah. centre midfield was Jerry Murphy, right. Crystal Palace, then yeah, up front yeah. was Paul Goddard. Oh, yeah, more clubs than Tiger Woods. He ended up with a nickname. He ended up with a nickname Bundles. Because <laughs> <laughs> of all the signing on fees he got. I mean, yeah. But from you had sort of like you said, bit of sweet years at Chelsea, yeah. 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 From there you moved to Millwall. Yeah. How did you find it down the dungeon? Yeah, well, it was um, lively. It was a bit of a shock, a bit of a culture shock. Um, in what way? I, well, I come through. You are sort of looking at what's in front of you. And you, you know, I, I signed Apprentice uh, 76, the summer of 76. Well, I didn't know. People were, uh, according to stuff that I've read and, and, and documentaries that I've looked at since, people at Chelsea were taking pay cuts because the, the, the summer I signed Apprentice, that, that famous long like summer of 76, um, the club was sort of on a downward financial spiral. Yeah. Then uh, 77, 78, I got for the four year deal to sign pro. I was already captain of reserves. I'd lit, blitzed all the way through. What used to be, they used to have South East Counties Division 1, South East Counties Division 2. I blitzed through that. Um, one of the head on shows in that. Then I made good progress, got put in the reserves, football combinations it was then. That was blinding, but good grounding, because she was coming up against people who were like, had a taste of first team football. Uh, it was a mixture of that. It was a mixture of people like yourself making their way. Yeah. It was a mixture of old pros who were maybe on the downer. Oh, it was a real um, mix then. Yeah, so what you've done, you got like you got educated on the little nuances, idiosyncrasies of the game, and like if someone, you know, tried to wind you out, you you, you knew how to stay out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then it was a great I great learning ground then, John, wasn't it? Great. It was great. It was great grounding. Great grounding. Then I had I had a little one in the first team for a different for different reasons really. Um, I would say now, looking back with the benefit of experience and hindsight, being a bit more chirpy and not as withdrawn, I would say I probably got thrown under the bus. Uh, we sold off the family silver and then people left at the club. They either didn't care as much as the supporters thought they cared and uh, just wanted an easy life Monday to Friday and basically took the mickey out, out of the place. You know what I mean? I was one of the ones, uh, you might find it hard to believe, I, I, I sort of mouthed off. I couldn't, I couldn't be having it. Um, we had, just to set the scene for you, we had, or I experienced, and some would say it hasn't changed that much. I had seven managers in six seasons. Oh, that's good for Chelsea, isn't it? That's <laughs> <laughs> a Chelsea fan. Yeah. See, a revolving door at Stamford well, Bridge. The, 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 the that is a lot of managers. Yeah, well, the last one that came in was Jeff Hurst, and his number two was Bobby Gould. Okay. So we had this tradition. So I've gone all around the houses. This is to answer, how did you end up at Millwall? 
we got caught in a pub on a Friday, right? But I, I got trapped in because no one was drinking. It was just tradition. It wouldn't be on the menu now. No two ways about it. We used to have 15, 20, used to traipse down. And um, what was it? Just social for the players. Super, literally bonding. There was no, there was none of the training ground like lunches and all that. The club, like the club was brassing. You had to, you go in in the morning, you get a cup of tea. If you wanted anything else, you have got to buy it. If you wanted lunch, you have to buy it. If uh, pre-season, you'd get again, it wouldn't be on the menu. You get a pot of tea, you get a jug of orange squash. There'd be an ham roll and a cheese roll, and then you go back out and do an afternoon session. Well, oh, now they've got air beds. And you've got you've got all of Who was the chairman when you was there? Was it Mears? Yeah, Brian Mears. Yeah, Mears. Yeah. It wouldn't be basic. Yeah. No, no. no. Yeah. Always had a nice tan, Brian Mears. Or you're going back and forth to uh, uh, Italy and the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. He used yeah. to have a job around with us. And uh, but there was this tradition. Every Friday you come out the main gate. It's still here, but I think it's called the Chelsea Pension, and that it used to be called the Black Ball. You come out the main gate at the bridge. You do a left. And then you go over the little one back bridge, and then mm. just just as you go thing at the, the, the bottom of it, there's the pub. Cottage pie, chips and beans, a black currant lemonade or a lime and lemonade, and a game of pool or a game of darts. Just a bit of bonding, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The door opens, Bobby Gould. What are you lot doing here? The, look at the time, the ten past two on a Friday. I said, Bob, what's, what's the problem? We've had a, we've had a bit of lunch, which the club don't provide for us. We've had, we're having a glass of Coke, some of them, or black currant lemonade, the game of Paul. No one's on the pitch, are No. He said, manager's office, three o'clock. And this is exactly how it went down. So there was me, my pal in the first team, Mickey Nutton. We sort of broke in together. Jimmy Clare, who was my pal out of his little. Um, his mum was one of the Dullisons. Um, Clyde Walker, Lee Frost. Mickey Fillory, Gary Chivers, seven of us. No, Chris Sully, eight of us. So they get called in, like Noah's Ark, two by two, but I'll get left. Yeah. I'll get left on the You're going to get in now, boy. Well, yeah, so that's it. I go in. Hey, I'm getting letters off of Terry Neal. You've ironed out a couple of Arsenal players. This is Bobby Gould. I said, well, that's going to be. Bob, you've got the relationship. You're ex-Arsenal. I said, I grew up in Arsenal support. My dad took me to every home game on the North Bank. I said, don't start talking to me about being over physical. I said, that's how you got a living. I said, until you got mined out by Gary Sprague, who'll give you a left hook because you tried to donkey kick him. I said, you went down like you've been in like Joe Frazier. I said, all you used to do is leave your footing on full backs and centre backs. I said, what was your goals to game? Like, like one in four, one in five? Don't talk to me about being over, overly physical. I said, and why do I care about Terry New and, and Arsenal? I said, if there's a youth team player going around kicking everybody and he gets ironed out and then an Arsenal player, because we, we were, were 1-0 up in a football combination game, uh, and there was a bit of bags and all that, and um, like an air of arrogance, if you like, but typical of professional football, high-achieving clubs know when to mix it, and they started to mix it anyway. I got spat out, so I just topped a player. Earth starts on me. You're an integral problem, part, you're an integral part of the drinking culture at this club, uh, da, 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 we keep hearing that you, you've got too much to say to yourself. This, I said, Jeff, I'm not. Right? It was Jeff then, not Sir Jeff. I said, I'm not. I said, three hours of lager. I said, I'm out of the game. I said, how, how can I be an integral part yeah, of the drink? Yeah, yeah. He said, right, okay, then you tell me who is. I said, listen, and I knew who it was. It was Brian Eastick, the reserve cup. He, uh, he said, if it's not you, you tell me who is. So I said, what you do, you go back to your source, right? which I knew who it was. You go back to your source and you ask him to do his own work a little bit better, like that. He says, if you don't tell me who the drinkers are in this club so that I can affect the culture, he said, you suffer the consequences, right? So I'm going to tell you the truth. I've so done beer, it. beer grass. I, 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 listen, I'm going to say I don't know if I can swear. Because I feel free. Well, i have been as I just said to him, like, you, you must be fucking joking, I said. I'm born in the East End. You play for West Ham, I said, and you're asking me to be a fucking grass. So I said, fuck, I said, fucking no chance. No chance. He said, in that case, expect to suffer the consequences. Starting Monday, you train at your own, at the, at the main ground. I'm going to keep you away from all the rest of the playing and coaching staff oh, until cool. I get you out of the football club. And then by the Friday, I was at Millwall. Wow. Yeah, that's how it happened. So I'm sorry about the that's long-winded how... answer, but that's, that's how it happened. That's how... Can you imagine that sort of happening today? Oh, today? you'd have the PFA, you'd have the media, you'd yeah. have... 
Sky News at the training ground, what's happened between... Well, like there is recently, because there was a little dust-up between, supposedly, between Steve Bruce and one of his players. I played with Bruce for nearly four years at Gillian, right? And um, he'll say Harry, he's a very lovely, likeable fellow, which is how he's got on. Good player, solid pro, but he'll, yeah. he'll say how it is. Do you think, as we're going on in 2021, and all we read about is the cancel culture, the one culture, do you think there's a real problem now with people actually saying it as it is? If they think you're not putting your weight or you're this, they can't say it because then it puts them on a pedestal to be shot down. You know what I mean, John? Yeah, it's a funny little conundrum because oh, the people, for years, decades now, people have been saying about how foreigners have come to this country and affected the players and their attitudes and their training habits and their dietary habits and, and the game in inverted commas, yeah. right? I think there's a little bit of the other. I think it's a little bit the other way. I just think like some of the uh, foreign players, because it's like um, a bit like TFL and a bit like our trade and a bit like London at the moment, it's one big fat massive contradiction, right? Because what you've got is you've got um, players who are in their own countries. Let's say like there's a, for instance, like the, the recent fallout, I've had him in the back of the cab, Jose Mourinho. The recent fallout with uh, Mourinho. You've had him in the cap? I've had him in the cap, yeah. What happened there? Yeah, King William. We had a good chat about it. He was with his missus. I think it would have either been his, his mother-in-law and father-in-law or his mum and dad. Oh. So, like, two people slightly older than him. And he'd done one of these uh, talks, forward slash presentations, oh, okay. up the city, King oh, okay. William Street. Got flagged. He jumps in. They all jump in. They ask for the destination because he still lives there. So, cab driver's etiquette. I won't give the game away. Uh, yes sir, no problem. And looking, he's, he's looked down like this. I said, what's the chances of that? Huh. He went, what, sorry? Like this, I said, Chelsea manager, which he was at the time, it was his second spell here, getting in a black cab driven by an ex-Chelsea player. What? Yeah, yeah. I bet he was. No, nah, you know how they go, the old foreign. No, nah, he goes, no. Nah. I said, yeah. He said, when were you there? You lied to me. Like, oh, no, no, no. I said, when, when? He said, I said, 74 to 80, all the way through the age groups into the first thing. Why did you leave? Well, I had a row with the first thing, with the manager. So they started laughing. What about? So I told him, hmm. like that. Anyway, we had a good chat about football, this and that. But. And did you find him? I know it was brief. Lovely boy. Lovely very charming. Guy. Very, very charming, very warm, uh, very down to earth. Because he's got a lot of detractors in the game, isn't he? Well, of course, yes. But like, the, but the bottom line is, um, the detractors normally comes as a consequence of him being, um, I think, a well-founded ego and a, and a bit of arrogance, but, which is like the, the like the, I don't think it's the right word, the contradiction, the dichotomy of what I was saying. Like back where they are, Spain, Portugal, they get called. It's like they get called like a dog, a mister. You understand? Yeah, yeah. So they're treated with respect. So I think yeah. what's happened is now, with the money floating about in our game, and then coupled with the attitudes maybe of one or two players that they've seen, like, oh, he gets away with this thing, I think they lose that uh, that gulf of respect that they've got in their own countries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Particularly in places like France, and uh, uh, sorry, I was going to say Spain and Portugal. Um, we know the French are temperamental, but then you've got that forensic mentality of the Germans. You understand what I mean? So I think when they've come here, I think a little bit of our mentality and the money flowing about the game, I think it's rubbed off on them. Yeah. And I think as a consequence, they could suffer. And, I, and what I will say is, um, he come, he made the point of coming round, shaking hands with me. But you know, like the thing Harry goes when he's on the touchline, he shakes hands. That's how he shook hands with me. And he went, he, yeah, and he went there. I have that like that. He calls his missus over, and he went there. I have that. The fair come the twenty pound, twenty pence, right? Two doors away from Julian Lloyd where he lives. And then he, he gave me a 40 quid and said, keep the change. No. Yeah. What a lot of £19.80 tip, I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but I just said to him, like, I, I said to him on my personal opinion. I said, like, you, you're like a cross between uh, like a general, a professor and an artist. I said, but you're also a very generous man. Yeah. Because, like you know, John, people you know in football, I just think now, when you, you, you're a manager, and you're at half time, and you've got these players, and you know they're not pulling their weight. Yeah, yeah. they're all millionaires. Yeah. What What does a manager do, John? Well, I'll be honest with you. This is. This well, what can you do? I always took on board something he said, um, Bobby Robson. He, he, when I was asking, I don't know if it was at Barcelona or whether it was uh, his 
early spell of Newcastle where he actually got me to Champions League places and they said, like, how's things, this and that, how's it going, any problems, you've been, no. My only problem is, how do you get a million out of sweat, right? Well, I think, what, what happens in the week, right, you sign a verbal contract, right? What I mean by that is, you've gone over and always, you always do a debrief where you call the players in. So you do, you do your... What would this be, after training one day? After training day? every day. Yeah. So, so you do, you do your, your, your finishing drills, you do your defensive drills, you do... And what I mean by drills is it would be something like maybe uh, just to think, uh, stop the ball, which I'll, I think is prevalent now and it's crying out for it because not enough teams stop the ball coming into their 18 yard box. You might do a cross and finishing drill. You might, you might have done, um, which is really relative to the point, you might have done a defensive strategy and rehearsed it against the reserves or the youth team. You might have done patterns of play, like shadow play, then rehearsed it, brought the youth team over and rehearsed it. So you've got yeah. like opposition um, after doing the shadow bit. And then basically you call them in, everybody happy, anyone want to pipe up, anyone got anything to say, anyone want any input, anything you're not happy with. So if they keep stunned, you assume that's it. Everyone's happy, and then all you've got to do is make the, all they've got to do is when they run over the white line, and this is where I made the mistake, you, you've got to meet the minimum prerequisites, which is to be fit, organised and motivated. Yeah. Well, we've done the fitness bit, tick. we've done the, the organisational bit, tick. and then it's the motivation. The motivation side of it, I made the mistake of thinking um, latter day after I got over my problems at Chelsea, uh, which there was no doubt, there was a big drinking culture, they're massive drinking culture. Yeah, but has that not been endemic with the, the game in England for decades, John? Yeah, well... Not just Chelsea, but throughout yeah. the football league. Well, let me put this to you. Let me put this to you. How bad that now, at the end of the day? Okay. If, if, as a manager, your biggest problem is a, dry, a, a player has uh, a bottle of champagne or a few lagers, yeah. how bad that? Because I, I would beg the suggestion, right, that it's probably... You've got bigger problems now with, with things like uh, social... Uh, Social media. Uh, I, I, I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, drug use. Yeah. Social, social drug use. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So, we've all heard the rumours. We've all heard the stories. So, I would suggest the lesser of two evils is let them enjoy their night and their couple of days off, relax and, and relax and have a yeah. have a couple of beers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, all it was really after the problem, the mistake I made. I expected people to approach training and games the way I did. Well, which is like over my dead body. You know what I mean? Because from from I want to go to the videos, the okay. the, the, the late and Orient one. Yeah. Um, and like you said, you played with Steve Bruce at Gillingham, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And and I tell you what, I noticed that I read today, and I find it unbelievable, John, is that at the end of your career right, as a player, you played in all the top five divisions of the country. Yeah. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it ain't bad. It ain't, I mean, what, it ain't bad. What a, legacy, what a legacy, John. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I probably... Listen, I'll hold my hands up. In the early days, I probably nosed it because I weren't enough... Yes, sir, no, sir, three bags, four, sir. I've actually addressed it. Um, call it call it serendipity, if you like. He's just done a programme, uh, Ian Wright, about domestic violence and yeah. trouble at home, which I watched. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've, I've got the old shakes in the, uh, on me chin and my missus like, you all right? I said, yeah, because I, I addressed it in my book. I was an angry young man as a consequence of uh, what had been done to my family by the government, as a consequence of uh, domestic violence between my mum and dad. So it's all in there, isn't it? It's all in there. It's how it comes out. It's the problem, yeah, it came out the wrong way. It yeah. came out the wrong way. And, and I'll hold my hands up. I didn't, I didn't look up. I had, after four years, uh, let's say five years really like nose to the grindstone, hammering it, training, really training well, working hard, got me a reward. You get that Chelsea shirt on, you're up the tunnel. Um, my own debut at half time against Coventry, my full home debut was at home to Liverpool. Oh. Reigning league champions. Don't get no better than that, John. <laughs> European champions, I put it in my book. What? Right? Reigning league champions, reigning European champions, like what we call European Cup winners years ago. And I said if they'd have entered the Grand National, the Derby, the Grand Prix and the British Open, they probably, they probably would, have, would have won that at all. It was a news of a foot. Yeah, yeah. But, um, Amazing. Yeah, kept a clean sheet though. So I'd done my bit. As a centre back, I'd done my bit. That's, that's... And then um, the opposite of serendipity, things started to think off the field. I was in, um, which I've been now for, be 
39 years this year married, 45 years together in a mixed race marriage. Wow. Um, I call my missus Bubble 07. Uh, she, <laughs> she's a bit of company rhyming slang. For those who don't know, her bubble, bubble and squeak, Greek, she's Greek Cypriot. But years ago, they used to do what the Asians do, which is like um, have arranged courtships, arranged engagements, and arranged marriages. I'll come in and impressive. saw what I wanted and took it. Yeah. I weren't, and I weren't. But luckily enough, I had the father in law in my corner because he knew me when I was a kid when I used to play. What was it, the brothers who weren't that being uncles? No, the bro yeah, no, the brother. He was my, he's been my best mate since I was six. Wow. Yeah, so so we played in all the little youth team, youth club games. So I had my brother in law and my father in law in the corner with, with me. And he treated me as well, if not better than his own son. But yeah. you've got like the mum, the aunts, the cousins, the all the, all the plastic gangster cousins and all that like that. Yeah, Life's hard enough without it. Without it, yeah. 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 But yeah. listen, all our peers, I mean, I'm, I, I have like sort of a smoke, self-satisfied smile of satisfaction, you know, we're still together. All our peers who had the arranged marriages and courtship and the families checked each other out and all that. They're on their second and third missus. Yeah. No, not being disparaging. No, 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 no. I'm not, I, I don't judge, but like, yeah, it, I, I, I want it, innit? Yeah. It's ironic. Me and her, everyone, everyone trying to pull us apart and get the English. Major strong. Well, the really English give her. Yeah. We went to the Millwall game and the geezer out the front giving out national front leaflets. He went to give one to me dad. So my missus, my, my dad's escorting me missus to the game. So my missus, Louisa, she's like, what's that, Reg, to me dad? And he went, that's no, nothing. He put it in his pocket. So the geezer pipes up, he says, it's to keep foreigners out of the, out of the, out of, like you out of the country. So she's getting it from the English and I'm getting it from the Greeks. Yeah. Oh, it's in there. So all that shit was manifesting, bro. Yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah. is, right, it and it's grew. Got, and it's got to come out somewhere. And it, that, and it can't it, stay bottled in, can it? I said in my book, um, it's on the back cover actually, if they take a bit out of the book, the geezer have designed the book. And it's like a thousand times I've been polite, courteous, cooperative, humorous, a nice guy to be around. And then the one time you flip your lid, but my missus said, you don't understand. She, you, when you flip in your lid, it's a bit different than when other people flip their lid. <laughs> well, hopefully you don't flip your lid. Nah, nah. nah. I'm only I'm flipping. near the door, John. So I'm getting on now. I'm, I'm watching your eyes. I'm going to make a bolt of the door. No, nah, we're all the same, though. We're just a fresh old, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, getting onto the video, John, the Channel 4 documentary, yeah. that people can go on, look at at YouTube. Yeah. There's some real, like, yeah. infamous clips, yeah? yeah? I think it was called the Orient, the club for a fiver. That's right. I mean... That's because of the idiot chairman. May you rest in peace. Yeah, he should have looked after me, but I walked in. I'm trying to do deals together. How was your days at Leighton? I know we've seen the little clips. They don't tell the whole story. No, they don't. Because I've just had... What's the whole story with you in Leighton Orient, John? <laughs> I was on the same money for eight years. Keith Peacock abused me like you wouldn't believe it, Jillian. And Gavin Peacock's... Dad, Dad. Yeah. he went to Charlton in the end, didn't he? Was he a coach? Yeah, he started off at Charlton. All right, yeah. Well, he's a trivial pursuit question. He, he's, he's, the, he's the first, no, he's the first, he's the first substitute in the English Football League, in the history of English football. Wow. He ended up over 700 games, uh, Keith. But I've gone there, really, and uh, he bought me from Millwall, because what happened was, there's a geezer, that you enjoyed me all, John? I ain't any happiest months of my life once I got over the initial fright. Yeah. I mean, what happened was we, Barry Kitchener, who was a club legend, oh, yeah. he took the boozer down and it was like a bit cliche, you know, what I mean? a footballer taking a pub. Sorry. It was a bit, it was a bit cliche. He took a pub on the corner of Old Kent Road, Peckham Park Road. Oh, and, he, and, and he, upstairs, what he'd done, he, uh, he, he gutted it and he'd done a bar exclusively for Millwall players. Wives, friends, and the opposition after a game to come back with us and have a think. So uh, we've just done Brentford three one in a in a London derby. You know, my Chelsea mates have come over, Mickey Nutton, Chris Sully, Jimmy Clear. Sit, I'm sitting in half a lager, and then uh, Giza comes up to me. He goes, "All right." <laughs> so I says, "Hello, mate. Yeah, you all right?" He went, "Yeah." He said, uh, "How you, how you finding it at Millwall?" So I said, "Yeah, I'm loving it." I said, "I've really settled in." Um, just, just a quick one in brackets, right? I, we, I made uh, probably second or third game at home. We're playing at home, uh, Oxford. So you're talking the Oxford, give or take one or two players that went through all the divisions. And yeah, got, they won the Milk Cup final. Yeah, they were good team. Or what we know as the League Cup final yeah. years ago, and then Milk Cup, whatever. Uh, the sponsors were, but it was the Milk Cup final. So I've, um, John Seisman, who thought he was the fifth Beatle, 
he rolls me, rolls me a shot, he said, what we call a, like a, a blue light, it's got a blue light on it, an ambulance hospital ball. Anyway, I was going through the geezer, bang, 50-50, the ball squirmed out, so I've got, this is in the center circle now, and I promise you it's not a figment of my imagination, I've got up quick, I've got another Oxford geezer coming towards me, crunched, I've gone through him, second 50-50, won that. Ball squirmed out. I've got a third one, one of the only monsters from the back four. He's coming towards me, crunch. I've gone through him. The ball squirmed out. What? Right? What? Right? I've gone, I need a breather. I've, I've rolled the ball to Nicky Chatterton, six yard ball. Yeah. The fucking gaffy wraps it like we won the European Cup because I've won three 50 50s, right? Then in the same game, we get a free kick um, wide on our left. So, in from the byline, maybe level with a penalty spot, but you know, between the 18 yard box and the touchline. So I'm jogging up, and then I'll give Nicky Chatterton, who's unbelievable, you know. Again, I speak in my book about fate and destiny, and apart from Ray Wilkins, easily by a distance, one of the best midfield players and better than any midfield player I've played at with, uh, with at Chelsea, apart from Jimmy Clare and Ray Wilkins. Uh, Nicky Chatterton gives me the eye treatment, spots the ball, he goes. He whips it in about head height. So I've gone like that with this Mal Shotton, who who's actually the captain holding up the milk cup a couple of years later. I've gone like that to threaten the back, and as he's backpedaled, I've gone boom, got across him, and it's coming head height. I've gone crunch, head, neck, and shoulders, fuck off top corner, like someone had volleyed it. So I've won 350 50s and scored, and then like F Troop, they want to take me down the old Kent Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But back to Kitchy's pub, the geese has gone. So you settled in all right? So I said, yeah. So he said, well, I'll be honest with you. I went, yeah, go on. Uh, he, he said, like, uh, so I said to him, like, George likes me. He signed me. I'm getting on with all the lads. Kitch is, like, you know. Did you like him as a manager, George Graham? Was he good? George, no, Petchy. Oh, George Petchy. Oh, George Petchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best manager I ever played on. Really? Yeah. Best manager I ever, ever played on. Uh, I know that's only because I never got the chance to pound Eddie McCready at Chelsea. But if I, if I count everyone... Um, Apart from like Danny Blanchfield, who gave me my debut at Chelsea, if I look at all the other managers, when I look at their characteristics, George was totally the full package. And why was that? Thirty years ahead of his time. Why was that? Um, honest, would uh, do what you've done for me. Now you've given me a platform. He'd let me express myself. He'd let me be myself. He'd let me talk naturally. Um, wasn't a control freak, and a big thing. Uh, latter day, but not so much then. He'd be very concerned about player welfare. Make sure that you've got your creature comforts, that you've trained right, but you've got everything you want, so that when you take the field, you've got a clear head. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought he was the nuts. He was above, wasn't he? He was. I loved him, and I, I, I'd have added the, you know, like I said about Eddie Mack as well. I'd have added the back of a bus and tackled a dumper truck for them too. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the geezer in Kitchy's pub, he said, "Well, I'll be true with you. We don't want you here. We think you're a fucking King's Road puff, not that." Yeah, nice. pulled, pulled out a flip knife. So I was like that, click, I'm like, whoa, like that. When he said King's Road Puff, so I straight away the ears on the back of my neck and think that I'll start bristling now. I'm thinking this is gonna turn into something. So as he pulled the knife out and clicked it, yeah, I fucking got up and turned it on. There was what you might call um, a bit of a fracker. <laughs> Disagreement. <laughs> no, but Kitch, he's got the, he's come, he's just, there was about 10 of my teammates got between us because I'm, I'm ready, what it was, it was only, I was only a few yards from the door. Yeah. So from my other background, I've managed to basically defend myself from thinking I'm about to frame down the stairs. But like, there's about 10 players have got between us and Kitch has died right across the 10 players, got all of them like that. You're fucking out of order. You're out. He's one of us. He's one of us. I just went, Kitch, I don't need this. Fuck it. Who was he? Just a, a Millwall supporter? Yeah, but a, yeah, but a, face. a face. And I know the name and I ain't going to say the name on camera. No, no, no. Right? But he knew what he was doing. He weren't pissed yeah. at him for No, him. he weren't pissed at him. He knew what he was doing. Oh, I knew what he was doing. He was one of the, he, I'll tell you speciality. He was uh, getting with someone else when they took on another firm, isolating someone and putting them through a shop window. That was his speciality. Oh. But I wasn't going to back down to him. No, 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 no. And uh, I just said to Kitch, I, I don't need this. And I'll, I'll fucking flip. But I, when Kitch got everyone apart, I went to me, to me car, which is a bit naughty because I'm, I live in North and I'm in the Old Kent Road. And I've had a couple of hours of log over there and I'm just, I want to lay in. Like the next day you don't realise, like the people don't realise when you play the game. Like, you know, you're battered. You are battered. You've got, you, you know, you're, you're stiff, I've you've got bruises, you've got some pain. Stuff that you take for granted. You go up in and there, someone's give you a dig in the ribs or someone's caught the back of your calf. 
I just want to lay in and then get up and have a hot bath and a bit of breakfast. So I get a fucking phone call at quarter past eight in the morning. Who's this? I can't, I go, hello. It's me, da, 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 which I'm not going to say the name on camera. So I went, yeah. He went, I was out of order last night. He said, I'm ringing up to apologise. Wow. Yeah. Makes a lot of sound sorry sometimes, doesn't it? Well, yeah, especially if you pull the blade yeah, in someone, yeah, yeah. then it's meant to be one of your players. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And um, I just said, look, I don't want to make heavy of it either. Let's move on. Apology accepted. Done. And that was it. And then after that, was... but then 18 months later, along comes a 24 karat. Uh, see you next Tuesday. Uh, called Peter Anderson. And um, he, well, to be, to be specific, he came from Tampa. And he took over from George, who was suffering ill health. They were going to put George upstairs, and then uh, ultimately, I think he parted company. They bring the geezer in, and he didn't like to cut me jib. So I was out, and I was on my, on, on my way to Gillingham. It's funny you saying about Barry Kitson having a pub in the old Kent Road, because that's where I grew up going out with, and on a Friday, Saturday night. And I'll never forget going into a pub, it was called, um, I think it was called uh, The Connoisseur. It was on the old Kent Road, right? And me and my mates went in there, he used to be on the door, Tamar Hassan, the actor. Oh, yeah. He's an actor now, he's quite successful now, but he yeah. used to be on the door. You know who's got that was? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a late one. And uh, he was on the door, big overcoat, he looked massive, Tamar. And you go up there, let you upstairs, and I'll never forget up the staircase, bomb, 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 go in the bar. And on a Saturday night, it was all the Millwall team in Millwall tracksuits. I think they were sponsored by a company called Spald or something, right? Yeah. Blue that. And I'll never forget Teddy Sheringham having a chat with Teddy Sheringham, and they was all there on the hit and miss in their tracksuits. Yeah, a little bit after my time. Because when I was there, two in the morning, this right? is a true story. Teddy was so good, right? Um, they could play well in Sheringham. Oh, yeah. There was like. Um, I don't know if it was a gentleman's agreement between the club and his school. He was turning up 14, 15, training with the reserves, with the youth team and the reserves. So wow. they said, right, if you're going to play with the thing, and he used to claim my boots, Teddy. Lime. They said, if you're going to play with the youth team and with the reserves, you do the duties. God, oh, dear. Lord. Yeah, so, so he's like 14, 15. I bring him and he goes, like, do, you want, do you want them done, six? So I go, yeah. Like that, and him and uh, Neil Rudder, he had one coming up behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're always acting the guy. There could be so many that, people that that's have that. cleaned your boots. So. It, it was that good, Teddy, though. Know, they used to let him play the off from school, but I'm assuming that there was a bit of an arrangement between the fingers. They say, look, he's not one of these with, like, you know, all the bells and whistles with mm. academia. Mm. He's a sportsman, so he's gonna, it looks like he's going to make it in a pro game. He's definitely going to get an apprenticeship, let him come and train and it'll push him on quicker. No, Roger I'm Cross sure. was the uh, youth team manager, mm. and he said, he said, do the duties. And he goes, get do them, Chris Ted. Well, it's amazing now you're talking about being so frank and- Great guy. And, and, and the guy, when you was there at Leighton, and we talked about the team talks, being honest, coming from the art, right? Yeah. People might watch them and go, oh, that's a bit strong. Lunatic, yeah. That's a bit strong. Yeah. But I've got it here, in 2020, your series, the Channel 4, you know, uh, Documentary, yeah. all for a fiver. Yeah. Forbes magazine, Forbes magazine, had <laughs> said it was one of the top five ever sport documentaries. I mean, you've got to take a massive pat on the back for that. I never got anything for it. And, and the young lady... Um... Top five, one of the top five sport documentaries. Yeah, yeah well, I suppose because it was so raw. Yeah. Because it was... It was like whatever the opposite, like first a perfect reality storm. TV, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, it was really in a way. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was a few floating about. There was the one uh, Taylor with England. You tell your colleague he just lost me my job and all that. Carry on <laughs> when he was England manager. Set the game back thirty five years, um, in my opinion. Uh, you had the one with um, Peter uh, Peter Reid, who I was on the full badge with. Oh, okay, yeah. Him and Bobby Saxton tearing into players um, when he was manager. You had uh, the what the Peterborough one come after me. Yeah, there was a few. There was a few. So it was I suppose the opposite of serendipity is a perfect storm. Yeah. I'm a rookie manager. It's like a big pal of mine since we were kids, Tony Gow, right? He went six years of age. Yeah, he was, yeah. He right. started at Chelsea. Yeah. But he, he, he left. He came on Pimlico, did he? Was he? Yeah, he's out of Pimlico. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. And, and his dad and his dad. His family is still around there, I think. 
his dad, his dad, may he rest in peace, was a black cab driver, and his uncle, yeah. uh, he was a black cab driver, and I used to get in the speeder with him down on the Cali and have a cup of tea with his uncle. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but like lovely people, proper, proper people, what, old school Londoners. Mm -hmm. But he said to me, Gally, he said, since you was a baby, well, not 33 when I first took over, because people forgot what I'd done the year before. You're thrown in the deep end, really, isn't you? Yeah. And, and, like, yeah. You, and like you said, John, you, you're so passionate and you want to give 100%. When you're watching players not doing that, you can't probably get your head around. Why would you not be so passionate and give me 100%? Not only that, wrong with you? Not only that, it's the technical side. The technical side, and it's a little bit slightly contradictory because mm. in the documentary, I go, F the technical shit, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, I go, it's about this, like, as in a bit of art. Do you know what I mean? It was like 3 nil down at 20 minutes away at Brentford on Boxing yeah. Day. And... Um, I just, I just ripped it because, like, you look at the stuff that the work I was doing in, in the week. Plus, I was juggling six jobs in the club. The club was hemorrhaging money. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I, it hasn't really had the recognition or the respect it deserves. But I've only come to realise that latter day. And I thought, well, if everyone else is going to strut around like Jack the Biscuit promoting itself, yeah. Why don't I pipe up for myself and say, look, you know, you as a club, you as a group of supporters, you haven't respected me enough and what I've done. So yeah. I think that. I've sold, I've sold a lot, I've sold a lot of books, but I think out the, the Orient the supporters, it's a negligible amount. The, the ones who have bought it and who can be interested enough to know yeah, the truth yeah, behind yeah. what the goings yeah. on. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it was a farce. I mean, the bird from upstairs, um, Maureen Anshaw, she comes around, this is a for instance, sit, stop Paul Saturday. I said, yeah, yes, more, yeah, looking forward to it. She went, no coach. So I went, what? She said, no coach, right? I went, what do you mean? She said, Angel Motors said, unless we settle our account, because she's she's like, oh, one of them that checks in the post. She's yeah. like getting pulled all over the place, trying to sort of fob off and appease creditors. She said, uh, Angel Motors have said that they won't send any more coaches until we settle our account in full. And then on top of that, any any future bookings, we've got to pay up front uh, the full amount in advance. So now I'm getting on the I'm getting on the phone, which is the job of the commercial manager, yeah. right? So I was like first team manager, first team coach, uh, reserve team coach, youth team coach, scout, and then I ended up becoming commercial manager or commercial director. The geezers having a, a couple of lagers and twenty Rothmans celebrating because uh, he's got a match ball sponsor. We need thirteen hundred quid to get a coach and an overnight stay before we play Stockport, which is three and a half three and a half hours out of London. You can't ask players to get up. Uh, at six in the morning or off six in the right. morning to get to the ground at half seven to leave at eight. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. So what happened, John? I'm getting on the I'm getting on the on the phone with pals who are in business, like the one was an estate agent, one had a sports shop in North London. If I put your thing on a board around the side of the ground and mention in the programme, can you give us a few quid? So, yeah, no problem. Soon as it's you, yeah. But what, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, I'm not, of course it is. Course yeah, it. yeah. And then putting you know, that fires everywhere and trying to get yeah. The best results possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the year before, what people don't realise, the 93 94 season, I'd come back to the club as youth team coach. Yeah. Well, with five games to go, uh, they used to have a board meeting in the first Thursday in every month. So we're struggling big time. We're like fifth from bottom. But what you've got to realise, this what people don't remember, that season 93 94 was when they restructured the Premier League and they chopped two teams off and it was going to be reduced from 22 teams to 20. Right? Right. So obviously t another two were going to get relegated, but then that had a knock-on effect down the divisions. Well, our right. divisions, <laughs> the trap door was going to let four drop through. And we were fifth from bottom. Oh so God. the previous manager, he's gone uh, at the meeting, it gets a bit heated, blah, 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 because he rang me after at the Centre of Excellence, right? Um, what would now be called the Academy, which I still attended when I was manager, right? Uh, I'm done here. I went, well, whoa, 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 what's happened? He went, well, he said, I pushed my chair back, I shuffled my papers, and I said, uh, basically, gentlemen, have, you, have you, you got confidence in me to finish the job, yes or no? Unanim unanimously, they said, well, quite frankly, Peter, Peter Eustace this was, the answer's no. So he said, I pushed my chair back, shuffled my papers, and said, in that case, the next time you speak to me will be through the League Managers Association and my solicitor. Walked out, no manager, with five games to go. So I'll come in. No. Yeah, I'll come in with five games to go, and we stave off the relegation, I'll keep them up, which everybody forgets. Then in the summer I'm told, well, we've got 29 on the playing staff, it needs to be 15. Jesus. <laughs> I, 
I had to get rid of 14, I had to get rid of 14 players. The chief scout walked out, so that saved uh, 38, plus my bit of wages. It saved 38 grand off the youth budget, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But fans can be fickle, can't they? Yeah. They want victory at all costs, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And they're, and they're, and they're, they're to blame with a, lot, with, with a lot of what's gone on. Yeah. Without going too deep, they're to blame with a lot of what's going on. Then you look at the conflict between coating our old club off, uh, my old club, uh, like you're a Chelsea man. They're going about Roman and all that, and I'll, I'll stick up for them. Yeah. Because they'd love a benevolent chairman like him, who starts off like, yeah, I'm going to sub you, sub you, sub you, we want success, success breeds success. But in the meantime, in the background, what we're going to do, we're going to get the club self-sufficient and we're going to get it run on a cost-effective basis, right? Well, all the ones that cut him, they cut their own chairman, they cut their own board off, the likes of like Spurs, Arsenal, West Ham in particular, for not spending money. Or yeah. well, what money they have spent, they've spent it. And when you look at Chelsea this year, the, we're in the Champions League final, the women's team in the Champions League final, yeah. the women's just won the, the league. Yeah. I mean, he has got up Saturday. Yeah, they make up Saturday. He's got Chelsea into a position where I don't think they're losing money. I think they're up there breaking even or making a bit of money. Yeah. So that's Marina, isn't it? With a, with a long term. Yeah, he seems to be yeah. doing it right, doesn't he? Yeah. You know? Well, if they're saying, well, that's um, a power grab and that's uh, a monopoly on young players, well, it's, it's not, it's not okay. Chelsea's problem, it's your that's problem. Right. That's right. Because I'm having things, I, I would love to have been at a Millwall Academy or uh, Academy Director or West Ham Academy Director because I said on the West Ham podcast I was invited on there about three weeks ago. You've been done too wrong for too long. You've got, you've got to pick your own. Every football, every single football club has got to have its own agenda and you need strong people to administer yeah. that agenda. And don't, when, when they get out of their prem, supporters and start throwing rosettes and scarves and running and putting flags in the middle of the pitch and all that turn out, don't take the notice of it. Just stick to your own agenda. And this was the thing that I had down at, uh, down at the O's, much lower down, much lower down. But the principles are the same because it's the same game. Well, there you go. What an interview. What a character. Oh, fantastic. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Look out for episode two coming very soon. Thank you.